Hi you guys and welcome back to my channel. It is Shay Michelle and I'm so happy that you are joining me today. Um, today is Monday and we're in the endocrine block and wow, this is the quickest I've ever just jumped into everything but let's get into it. We have a cool day in my opinion planned and a ton of class and so originally I was going to come late to class because I wanted to show people my outfit and you know walk to the front. However, if I come late to class then I won't be able to sit in the back and record because the seats will be filled. Today I'm actually going to go to class on time prompt and even early per se because we have a required class at 10 o'clock which I'm about to tell you guys the name of once I'm able to log into this portal okay now that we're in basically this morning is all about the thyroid so at 8 a.m. it's 8 46 also but at 8 a.m. we had a thyroid lecture at 9 a.m. we had a hyperthyroid hypothyroid hyper and hyper Bow thyroidism lecture and then at 10 a.m. we have a required lecture with everyone we have a required lecture from 10 to noon on adrenal cases um, and then if you guys seen my last vlog I was really confused on what they meant by case responses but all it is is just cases and in theory we're supposed to look at the cases before class but you do just go through it with your like teacher so you don't really have to. Oh. At one o'clock, we have another required session. This is our professionalism course, and I think it's actually our last professionalism course. So the subject is the role of a student physician, and quite fitting because we're about to be like, you know, the epitome of student physicians very soon. So I think this is our last one. Oh my gosh, everything's coming to an end, and it's kind of crazy because we're ending this preclinical phase um, before we actually get into hospital, and I no longer have lectures in the classroom. I just I'm in the hospital every single day. But that's the gist for the morning. I'm actually sw changing book bags because this one cannot fit my step book. So I bought a new bag at Target, this big green one, because it can't fit this big book. And I already know, I'm already like wearing into it, so I need a new bag. So I've already eaten breakfast, I've done everything I need to do this morning, it's 8.48. So I'm going to walk to lecture and try to be there on time for the 9 a.m. lecture, which ultimately makes me on time for the 10 a.m. lecture. And then I'll make sure to show you guys everything that's going on so let's get into it all right you guys so we have a change in plans because i realized the class is not in the lecture hall it's actually in our small group classes which works because i don't have to be crazy early anymore so i got some duncan and i'm just going to go to the library for an hour and do some flashcards, and then we'll go to the class met an angel on the freeway could hardly believe it took you out for coffee you didn't really need it you try to explain that love it was all you need you need met an angel on the freeway could hardly believe it took you to a movie we did my goodness oh my gosh i'm finally back in my room it's seven o'clock and i'm just going to show you guys my notes in addition i just want to tell you a little bit about what i've been doing so you may see my tactics are a little bit different i've been really utilizing the first a book um and more of the stories i changed my study habits a little bit and so now what i do one I'm keeping up with the day's material on the day that it happens. I don't, before I used to kind of do like a surge of Boards and Beyond videos and stuff like that, but no. Now what I'm doing is I'm watching the Boards and Beyond videos that correspond to topics that we're covering in lecture on that day. And then after I watch the video, I'm then going to the lecture and like just scrolling super fast, but nevertheless scrolling to make sure that whatever's touched on in the lecture, I have watched a video on or made notes on or something because one thing I realized between this and the test, honestly, is that there was a lot of things or there's been a decent amount of stuff on our test that didn't necessarily correspond to, you know, what I've been watching in Boys and Beyond or what I was in my first aid book. So obviously I'm getting all of those questions wrong unnecessarily. Um, so that's why now I do watch the Boys and Beyond videos, but then I always make sure to go through and mind you this run through say everything corresponds it doesn't take me more than 10 ish minutes and that's definitely an overestimate more like five right after i finish the boards and beyond video i'm going to my anki cards and i'm then unsuspending of the cards that correspond with that video and i use on king i use that deck and then they already have it grouped nicely and have the tags on for like every boards and beyond video every pathoma video every sketchy video so it's very very easy to just go in and then um, unsuspend those cards um because i feel like those looking at my first aid book is pretty boring i want to show you guys something i actually made yesterday i made like 
I love cheat sheet because y'all know I love my cheat sheets. As we know, the endocrine system, the foundation of the endocrine system is quite literally hormones and hormones encompass your entire body. So I wanted to make a cheat sheet that I felt like corresponded to that. So I'm just gonna make sure to insert it um, right here. And let me screenshot it in the moment too. And I made this cheat sheet just to go along with everything so I could see it all on one page. And mind you though, none of this includes anything with a thyroid because today we did a thyroid. That's what I did yesterday. Today I watched those videos. And so I was kind of rushing just because I, I just hate being in the library late at night. So I um, am going to now go through and look at go through and look at our lecture slides just to make sure that everything still overlaps and corresponds correctly. And then the end of my night will consist of Aki cards. In addition to, I'll be practicing my physical exam with one of my friends and I'll make sure to record that. And so once again, we have the Aki coming up in, well, I have it two days from now. So I'll make sure to show you guys that. But basically, we had just have the chance of having every single physical exam on there. We did the cardiac, pulmonary, MSK, neuro, abdominal. I'm sure we did some more that I'm forgetting. A mental status exam. Um, or because remember for this OSCE, we have three stations. We'll be acting like real physicians and going room to room to room. And in between each room, we'll have to write an actual patient note. And that's where we write down their entire HPI or history of present illness. We'll be doing a full patient write-up in addition to any of our physical exam findings. And yeah, so that'll be the end of the day. Eh, maybe not the end. Who knows where these Anki cars are going to fit in. This was like a good classic, you know, med school day. Earlier today, we had our epic course. And so we all were in that big lecture hall. That's what I was showing earlier. And then before that, we had our case study, our thought, or adrenal case studies um, but I didn't really record that just because it was like a smaller room and it felt weird because I wasn't with my normal group of like my normal class of people let's get started on looking at the actual lecture slides and then I'll probably be back when I start my Anki or when I do my physical exam update you guys so my friend bailed on me when it came to studying for our physical exam boohoo but I have been sitting here reading everything so I'm just gonna tell you guys all of the physical exams that we have to do or at least have to know for this oski cardiovascular abdominal mental status msk and the neuro exam and so personally me and someone else were talking about how because neuro was i guess two blocks ago when we first came back to school we honestly don't even remember the cranial nerves which is a whole another thing but um, for my own practice and to let you guys know, basically for the MS, or neuro exam, we have to look at every single cranial nerve. So for example, cranial nerve one is olfactory, so smell, but no one really does that one in practice because like, what are you going to do? Bring a strawberry to someone and say, oh, what do you smell? You know, so that's not really used. However, we start with cranial nerve two, which is their optic nerve. Then you go to cranial nerve three, which is their ocular motor nerve. And so that's how you see around cranial nerve five, which is your trigeminal. And on your trigeminal that has sensory and motor components. So for that one, we actually touch someone's like temple area and we say swallow. And then we touch in the back kind of where their jaw meets their skull and also say swallow. And then we'll do light touches on the forehead, cheek, and jaw and say, oh, do these feel the same on both sides? Because mind you, you have two nerves coming on both sides. So like maybe on one side your trigeminal nerve is compressed and the other side is fine so if we do two soft touches you may say oh no that doesn't feel the same so that's why we do that one and then seven is your facial nerve and so for the facial nerve we have people raise their eyebrows or like raise your eyebrows and then we say smile and then we say puff out your cheek puff out your cheeks because your cranial nerve seven is motor and then cranial nerve Eight is hearing, so we already we do our hearing test with this obnoxiously large tuning fork. We like put something on your head and then put something behind your ear. But mind you, it's just a hearing test. I forgot what cranial nerve nine is. However, oh yeah, no, 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 I forgot. But cranial nerve ten is your vagus, and you and in order to test nine and ten, you have a patient open their mouth and you say oh, open your mouth and say ah, so 
uh, that whole movement. We're looking to see if your like uvula is midline or if it's like swayed to one side. That means something. <laughs> and then that's nine ten. Cranial nerve eleven is your um, accessory nerve, and so that controls your trapezius and your sternocleidomastoid. So we'll put our hand on our shoulder, say raise your shoulder, face on both sides, and say like go against our hand, push towards our hand. And then finally, cranial nerve 12 is the hypoglossal, and then technically that's like tongue movements, but we don't have to test that. So <laughs> that's the neuro exam, and I did that halfway for you guys, halfway for my own practice because I had forgot them. We have just various acronyms to remember everything. 1017, and I'm just not gonna do my flashcards because I wanna wake up early tomorrow and really get going really quickly. So I'm just gonna call it quits for the night just because I don't wanna overwhelm myself. And yeah, we're just gonna go from there. So, uh, I just want to thank you guys for watching this video. I know it was a ton of chatting. I usually try not to chat this much and have more action, but today was really like just a sit down and work day. Um, and in general though, I hope you guys like this video. And then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys in my next one. My friend just sent me a really funny TikTok because I wear Crocs like every day. And so she sent me a TikTok about how on Halloween I should wear like a big Croc as a costume. And it's pretty funny. <laughs>